So our third speaker is Judith Harrison, who's from Cardiff. She's a Wellcome Trust uh, GW4 Clinical Academic Fellow, and she's talking about identifying biological pathways to Alzheimer's disease using MRI markers and polygenic scores across sectional study. Judith, thank you. Thank you. My name's Jude. I've just started the second year of my PhD. I'm going to... Um, well, the research question that underpins my PhD is, can we use genetic data and structural imaging biomarkers to better stratify patients with Alzheimer's disease? And I'm going to present an analysis of structural brain imaging data using Alzheimer's polygenic scores. Alzheimer's is, of course, a condition we should all care about, not least because if we live long enough, one, of, one in three of us will succumb ourselves. So small genetic risks, otherwise known as single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, cause small increases in risk for late onset Alzheimer's disease. We can aggregate these, these SNPs together using a technique called polygenic scoring. And polygenic scores are the weighted sum of these risk SNPs. They've already be, been shown to be associated with some changes in brain structure. Because I'm interested in trying to sort people out into more biologically relevant groups, I tested whether pathway-specific Alzheimer's polygenic scores were associated with structural brain changes in a group of young adults. So in order to do a polygenic score analysis, you need two entirely independent data sets. I use data from the International Genomics of Alzheimer's Project, or IGAP, and the target sample was the young adults scanned as part of the Avon Longitudinal Study of Parents and Children, or ALSPAC study. SNPs were mapped to genes in eight pathways implicated in Alzheimer's disease, and we used a standard method of polygenic scoring in Alzheimer's disease and a standard volumetric analysis in MRI. I did a linear regression analysis adjusting for uh, age, sex, and intracranial volume. So there were lots of results. I looked at eight polygenic scores and 45 MRI measures altogether. And what I wanted to focus on here was the results from the immune pathway-specific polygenic score. Um, there were a number of areas of cortical thickness that were shown to be as reduced and associated with the immune polygenic score. Um, what I've shown you here is a, uh, one of the cortical parcellation images that FreeSurfer can produce uh, with labels to show you where the regions are to orientate us a little bit. So the, right, the posterior cingulate on the right and the left hand side, the left rostral anterior cingulate here, the left insula, the right lateral orbital frontal area and the right caudal middle frontal region were all associated with the immune polygenic score for Alzheimer's disease. Now, what does this mean in terms of the biology? Unfortunately, I can't um, cut up these brains and look at them under, under a microscope. These people are still walking around. Um, and uh, drawing inferences from MR biomarkers is, uh, is tricky in terms of the underlying pathology. Uh, the other caveat is that Alzheimer's disease is notorious for having different geography for its different pathological hallmarks. But the map of my results did rather remind me of this. Now, this is from Brach and Brach's seminal paper um, showing the distribution of amyloid pathology in Alzheimer's disease as it progresses from stage A to B to C. And as you can see, there's some significant overlap with the regions identified in my analysis and those earliest affected by amyloid pathology. <coughs> So this is a little bit like a Manhattan plot. I've got the minus log 10 of the p-value here, and I've got some of the brain regions here. Uh, what I've plotted is the results for the immune pathway compared to the results for the overall polygenic score for the same brain regions. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because if what we were doing with the pathway-specific polygenic score was just chopping up the polygenic score into chunks that weren't at all biologically relevant, then what we would expect is that the overall polygenic score, because it contains more SNPs, would outperform the immune polygenic score. And what we actually see is the reverse. It seems that the immune pathway polygenic score is associated with more changes in, in cortical thickness in particular. Um, and that suggests that what we might actually be doing um, using this technique is removing some of the noise from the polygenic score uh, by focusing on SNPs in relevant disease pathways. So what we showed here is that Alzheimer's disease pathway-specific risk is associated with reduced cortical thickness, in, even in these young adults, showing that genetic risk in Alzheimer's pathways can be linked to brain structure differences potentially decades before disease onset. We had a very large discovery sample size for this cohort. In future analyses, I'm going to use a, a larger target sample size in UK Biobank, and I'm going to further explore the contribution of APOE in the polygenic risk score. 
This suggests it could enable better stratification of patients using this genetic and biological evidence. Thank you very much to my, for listening and to my supervisors and collaborators and funders. So quest questions. Yeah, Mandy. That was very interesting, thank you. You mentioned that you did some um, correlations with sex. Did you find any differences? And do you think this is worth repeating at different age points? Um, no, we didn't find any significant correlation with, with gender in this particular study. Um, what we're going to do in, in the UK Biobank study, is obviously that is a much older population. It's people um, who are in mid, mid to later life. Um, and so we're interested to see whether we observe this pattern of association in that age group as well. So Edwin and then no, John, you've got the microphone, so on you go. Power is everything, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, What's the killer experiment here? How are you going to determine whether these polygenic risk scores actually do increase risk of Alzheimer's longitudinally? So are you asking whether they're predictive of Alzheimer's disease? That's already been demonstrated for the overall polygenic score. Um, if you include all of the SNPs that are associated with Alzheimer's disease at a p-value threshold of 0.5, it's predictive of Alzheimer's disease in 78% if you include gender. Um, so, so what do you... Clear, what's the killer experiment to show that young adults who have thin cortex mm. have a greater risk of Alzheimer's disease? Obviously, we're in a position with, with a Avon longitudinal study of parents and children to assess some of that over time. But by the time these people develop Alzheimer's disease, I may no longer be around myself. That's part of the problem of studying the disease. What we're looking at is Alzheimer's specific genetic risk. And so that's, and the other nice thing about this, looking at this young age cohort, is that we're not confounded by other effects of age. Mm. Yes, and that's my plan is, my next analysis is gonna be of UK biobank data doing a similar thing. I mean, this is a similar sort of question, but you didn't say how common these eight SNPs are. And if they are fairly common, which I'm assuming, you mm -hmm. could go into a bioresource and you could select people that have already expressing those five or more. You probably wouldn't get the full house. And then you could psychometrically test them when they were young. Would that not partly answer John's question? So all of the SNPs identified in GWAS, by, by definition, are common variants. Um, the... Uh, polygenic risk profile is normally distributed across a population. Um, for each uh, group of uh, disease pathways, you have uh, hundreds of SNPs included in each. So you will expect uh, an individual to have, individuals to have a range of, of scores for each, um, for the overall pathway polygenic, polygenic scores and for the pathway specific ones. Um, recall by genotype is something that's very interesting for myself and my colleagues. Um, it's slightly ethically problematic in that you don't want people to discover what category they're in, um, but it's something that I'm looking into at the moment. Okay, great. Thanks very much. There's again a lot of questions, but hopefully you can just continue that during lunch. Thank you.